Welcome to the Stellar Gaming Dev YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to give you an easy tutorial on how to add a health bar and a power bar for your character. The extensions I'm using for this project are the Smooth Camera extension, which just follows the player. Then I have the Shake Object extension, which shakes any object it's applied to. It's quite useful and very easy to apply. The Panel Sprite Continuous Bar, also known as the Resource Bar, is a great extension for things like your player, ammo, health, and mana. Finally, I have the Health Points and Damage extension, which is pretty great. It works for players, enemies, NPCs, and even inanimate objects, like walls and breakable doors. Let's go to the Game Scene window where I have the objects placed. There are two continuous bars on the scene, and then down here, I have a character I created for this tutorial. The two continuous bars are on a separate layer called UI that are above the base layer. Let's preview the game so we can see why they are on a separate layer. As you can see, wherever the character moves, the two continuous bars will follow along. This is what you typically want in a game for your main hero. If you place the health bar on the base layer, watch what happens. The continuous bar becomes a background object, and with something as important as player health, we definitely don't want that. Make sure you always put your continuous bars on a separate layer above all the other layers if you want them to be seen at all times. Let's head over to the add an object pop-up, and if you scroll down you'll see the resource bar. This is what you would click on to get a health bar or power bar. By default, you already have a variety of different ones you can choose from. However, you don't have to use any of these. You can make your own, but this is pretty convenient. Let me save this right quick so I don't run into any issues later. We can go check the continuous bar properties for the hero's health and you can see the name and the values are 100, which means the player's health is going to start full and can only go up to 100. Everything else is the same. The only thing that I did modify was the actual image itself. I made it green instead of its original color. If I quickly go and check out the power bar, it only has an initial value of 5 and a maximum value of 50. So it will be slightly filled when the game starts. If I move to the character, you can see there are several behaviors. The smooth camera behavior follows the player wherever they go on the x-axis. This is very useful for platformer games. The health behavior is set to 100 and I will tie this back to the continuous bar extension in the event sheet, which I'll show you shortly. It's pretty easy. So let's go check out and see what is going on in the game. Did you see my power bar decrease? Let's bring the power back up again. I'll do a fireball. Fireball! Then firebuster. Firebuster! Firebuster takes down a lot of energy. Fireball! Fireball! You can observe here how the fireball ability takes down a small amount of power compared to firebuster, which means it's intended to be weaker, but can be performed several times before the power bar is completely depleted. Fireball! If I do Firebuster twice, it will take down the entire power bar. Fire Buster! Fire Buster! I can also mess with the health here just by simply pressing a button to apply damage. Let's move to the event sheet so I can quickly show you what I did to affect the health bar and the power bar. The condition here checks if the continuous bar for the hero is empty, but as you can see it is inverted. So this means if the bar isn't empty, then everything under this condition needs to work. And in this case, it will be all the player's movements. 
Let's move to the event where I press the key to cause damage to the player. Here I have a condition that triggers every time I press the A key. If we go over this event's actions, you will see I have one that modifies the continuous bar. I've selected the action to subtract the value of 5 health points from the player, and every time I press the A key, it is going to take down that much damage as you saw in the game preview. Moving down, this particular action applies damage to the actual character's health points and it is set to match the same amount that is taken from the continuous bar. This is super easy. Everything else in the actions deal with animation and sound which will be unique to your own game depending on what you want to create. If I go to this event block here you'll see there is another check for the player's health. Since the player's health and the continuous bar take down the same value when damage is applied, if the continuous bar is empty, that means the player is no longer alive and the following actions will occur. This can be when your character does an animation when it has no more health such as collapsing or fading away. From here we can quickly observe how I did the power bar. The condition works every time I press the S key. It will add the value to the power bar. The next condition works when I press the D key and raises the value to 0.5. The only difference is this is not controlled by a trigger once, so if I hold the D key down, the power will gradually increase. This is a good effect for characters or weapons that need to charge before releasing either a regular or more powerful ability. It's quite easy. And finally, we will head to the Ability tab. Pressing the Q key makes the character swipe, and pressing the W key makes him do the fireball skill, while pressing the E key will make him perform his firebuster. You can see that the subcondition here has a check for the value of the power bar. If it is greater or equal to 5, it will perform all the actions. There's an Create the Object action for the particle used, which creates the fireball at the position I want. Here is where I change the value of the power bar to subtract 5 when the player uses it. So this condition checks to see if the player has enough power to perform the ability and if they do it will work but then take away 5 energy points. As you can see, this is all quite simple and you can have this done in no time. I hope you found this tutorial beneficial for your game making pursuits. Next time I am going to talk about performing a combo with your character. <laughs> Don't forget to leave a like, a comment, or subscribe if you're interested in finding out ways to make G-Develop even easier. <laughs>